Welcome everyone to the District 34 International Speech Contest Final. Please remember to turn off your cell phones and enjoy the contest. I know I present you the chair of the contest, Distinguished Toastmaster Carolina Flores. Thank you, Giovanna. Hello and welcome to this international speech contest. Now our contestants are ready for this great experience. I ask all our participants who are in this contest to participate in a, in a dynamic of choosing their winners and to send your winners, winners through the link or QR code print in your balloons that were, were delivered to you. Please participate in this dynamic. It's going to be very interesting for all of us. Now, I'm going to ask the head judge to confirm if all the team is present and if everything is in order to start the contest. Yes, we are ready. Um, um, everything is okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to share you the order of participation. So our fir first contestant is Andrea Castellanos Ibarra. Contestant number two, Guillermo González Ballina. Contestant number three, Cynthia Mariel Ramírez Romero. Contestant number four, Paula Lomelí Barrera. Contestant number five, Carlos Rodrigo Arvide. And contestant number six, Corina, Corina Moreno Diaz. Andrea, are you ready? Yes. Andrea Castellano Sibara, the finish line. The finish line, Andrea Castellanos Ibarra. Imagine the following scenario. You are going to cross 42 kilometers and you have two options. Option number one, you decide to grab your car and drive alongside the people just to see from that perspective how it feels and probably spend two liters of your gas. Option number two, you decide to run each kilometer of that race, knowing it's going to take hard work and training, but at the end, it's going to be worth it. Which one would you choose? Dear Toastmaster, judges, and guests, life is precisely that. We have, or sometimes, a full marathon. And getting to that finish line is not always that same. Marketing and social media tend to tell us otherwise. They sell us this perfect and incredible idea of what success is. But we know it's not that same. For me, life has been full of muscular cramps, scratches, and blisters. Or as we might call it, obstacles and pain. So let me tell you a little bit of how it's been for me getting to that finish line. My first devastating muscular cramp was at kilometer. I was playing the piano for my sister since I had just learned the happy birthday song and I was beyond excited to play for her. 
I'm not sure how many minutes went by, but suddenly I was at the hospital. Diagnosis, seizures, explanation. There's nothing wrong with your brain. We don't know what's happening. My second obstacle was blisters. With some bandages here and there, I was running. I was back in the game. I could even feel the wind in my hair without knowing I was being prepared for a bigger challenge. On kilometer 25, my brother-in-law was diagnosed with cancer. My family couldn't believe what was happening. This didn't seem real. Luckily, after some weeks, he was finally in remission. And he could probably think, this wasn't a challenge for you. It was for him. And you are wrong. But it was more than a challenge, a preparation. One week after his remission, my mom was also diagnosed with cancer. No, not again, not to her, not my mom. I felt like I couldn't get up from this one. It was just too hard. Explanation, she has a healthy lifestyle. Doesn't make sense to us. What do you mean? After going through what seemed like one of the hardest kilometers in my life, I picked myself up and was back in the game. I was running, I was fresh. I could even see that finish line. And suddenly, I started experiencing shortness of breath. I was rejected to the master's degree of my dreams in Ireland. I couldn't compare into my lungs. Explanation? There was none. Thank you for applying. After facing these challenges and obstacles, I was ready to throw the towel and give up. But instead, I used that towel to swipe the sweat and continue. And I asked myself, what would happen if Bill Gates, Oprah, or Walt Disney gave up? But most importantly, what would happen if I gave up after one more try? After 10 years of being medicated, now I've been in remission for five years. After fighting alongside my mother, now she's been in remission for three months. And after being rejected in Ireland, now, I'm accepted in Italy. Therefore, if you ask me, if I would rather take the car or run the race, I would definitely choose to be a runner. Because being an expectator is fun, but it doesn't compare to the thrill and excitement you get from accomplishing things as the main actor, I'm crossing that finish line. Thank you, Andrea. Please, one minute for judges.
Guillermo. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Guillermo Gonzalez, the rat in my kitchen. The rat in my kitchen, Guillermo Gonzalez. Everybody has dreams, that is a reality. Everybody has objectives, that's something that always happens. But tell me, are you prepared to achieve your dreams and objectives? Are you able to achieve your goals? Today I want to talk something that everyone may know for sure. In order to get your objectives, you need to know what is the strategy and what is tactics. Those two terms are really, really important. But let's go one piece by one piece. So first, what is the strategy? The strategy is about making decisions. That is a strategy. You need to know what you are going to do, and then you need to know what you are not going to do. That is a strategy. But it's not just knowing what you are going to do or what you are not going to do. Also, you need to know what is around you, what is the environment. You need to know the risk and the opportunities. But also, you need to know if you are strong or you are weak. That's very important. You need to know yourself, but also you need to know outside yourself. Then, what is tactics? Well, tactics is about executing, putting your action into action. That means if you made a decision, then you go to make that decision happen. And then you need to execute. That is tactics. You may tell me, well, I don't know how to start. As always, you need to have tools. Tools are very important resources that will help you to achieve what you are looking for. For example, if you want to learn strategy, you need to learn from books. Then you have books that will tell you what are strategy. Then you need a notebook so you can write down your ideas and then you put those ideas into writing. In addition, you need a pen for sure because you need to write. So writing is one of the most important things that leaders, but especially good leaders always do. I'm sure you will say, well, everybody can know that, everybody can tell me that. But today, I want to tell you a personal story that happened to me. And probably that story is going to make you clear what is the strategy and what is tactics. Two different concepts, but very important. Give me just one second because I'm getting a little bit hard over here and I want to feel comfortable. Let me just throw this away. So it was a given day. It was five o'clock in the morning. I was having this beautiful dream and I was resting like any other day. Suddenly, I hear something strange. Ow! And that wake me suddenly. And I said, what is going on here? Then I saw my kid, one of my kids coming and saying, Dad, there is something in the kitchen. Dad, there is a rat in the kitchen. And I was like, oh, God. This is going to be hard. So I decided that I need to do something. And then, well, I decided this is not going to be a normal day. This is going to be tough. 
And I went downstairs. And I was like a hero because I feel empowered. You know, I'm going to take this route out of the house. So I started to look everywhere. Where is the rat? Where is the rat? And I saw the rat. I was petrified. I was petrified because it was a black, long, and scary rat. And I saw it. And I was kind of very, very scared of doing anything. But most important, there was a risk of that rat going everywhere on the house. So I decided that it was time to put in action my strategy. So I took a decision and the decision was, I need to block the kitchen from the rest of the house because that rat cannot go everywhere. So what I decided to do was to put some dashboards on the kitchen. So I block the rat from going everywhere. That was step number one. Step number two was to put my family at stake. They were at risk, but you know, we need to be prepared for anything that is going to happen. So I tell my family, please leave this to me. So I moved everything around. I was looking for the rat, but the rat didn't came. And I was scared because where the hell is the rat? I didn't know that. Then I sit waiting for the rat. The rat never came. It was 10 o'clock in the morning and the rat never came. So I went into my laptop and then I started to write an email and I told my colleagues, you know, I have a personal problem and I cannot join these calls because I have something to do at home. So I was writing this email very diligently and then suddenly, I hear it. I hear that sound and I said to myself, it's the rat. The rat is back. So I took my tools and I decided it was time to face that. What I did is to approach the kitchen. And then I saw the rat and I jumped and I started to Boom, boom, boom. So, and the rat came out of the house. So this is the thing to consider. Think about your strategy, think about your tools, but also, and always think about your actions. Boys, take into account your tools, be prepared. Thank you, Guillermo, one minute for Georgia. Mariel, are you ready? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Mariel Ramirez, detachment, detachment, Mariel Ramirez. It was the middle of the night and suddenly I started crying for no reason. I realized that I was surrounded by so many things in my room. And I could hardly breathe. Fellow Toastmasters, Countess Chair, dear guest, this was the first time that I was suffering a panic attack. Why? Because my room was packed wall to wall with a lot of stuff. I had toys, I had boxes, I had clothes, and I had trash. I was only 13 years old, 
and I realized that I had become a hoarder. I was attached to every single thing in my room. Sometimes we carry with a lot of weight on our shoulders. Let's see what's inside my trash bag. Hmm, a napkin. Actually, this belongs to my first boyfriend. Oh, Eric, trash. Some expired pills, definitely trash. How to win international speech contest. Maybe this is not trash. A rock. Actually, this is a perfect example of attachment to trash. So let's take this rock as an example of attachment. Let's talk about three things I was finally able to detach myself from. The first rock I decided to throw away from my trash bag was material stuff. As I already mentioned at the beginning, I was attached to every single thing in my room. One day, I arrived home and my mom said, Oh, Marielle! I found this perfect folder for legal documents. I destroyed all the papers inside so we can use it. Oh, fine, mom. I ran to my room and I started crying like never before. I used to keep all my memories inside that folder since kindergarten till the university. So I was pretty sad when she told me that she destroyed all the things inside. Why was I so attached to documents? Because those documents were memories and those memories reminded me how good I was and that I could achieve any goal. It was pretty sad for me, but it was time to detach from material items and memories. So I now keep those memories in my heart and in my mind instead of material items. And that's how I finally detach myself from that first rock. The second rock I was finally able to detach myself from. I thought that it was enough with the last rock, but it was not only about material things. This rock was social media. It was my dream to become an influencer and get paid by many brands traveling around the world for free. But everything felt so fake. Why was I so attached to social media? Because I was getting high from a lot of dopamine because of the likes, followers, and comments. So I decided to delete Facebook, to delete. You got it? TikTok. I'm the worst one. Instagram with those stories. I started working on my self love and catching up with real friends. And that's how I finally detached myself from that second rock. And the third rock I was finally able to detach myself from is also related with the past rock with the negativity of the past rock. And this was negative thoughts. So imagine that I used to have a hamster inside my head, but a fat hamster because here we don't do so much exercise. So that hamster was always thinking on the bad thing that happened in the past and that we happen in the future. So imagine, oh my dear, think on the bad things that you did in the past. Oh yeah. And then the same hamster, oh, Marielle, you will never succeed in life. You will fail. So I decided to take that hamster inside my head on vacation to Cancun so I could focus on my breath. I started breathing in, breathing out to be here and now. So each time that hamster wants to come by, I say, Mm -mm, no, take all my money, but you're not coming back. 
And that's how I finally detach myself from that third rock. As you might imagine, I was a hoarder caring with a lot of negative things for my life. Material stuff, social media, or negative thoughts. I was so committed with this topic that I challenged myself once again. What I did was to do a challenge because I used to believe that I was beautiful because of the length of my hair. So I decided to cut my hair just to find another purpose for it, like donating it. If I was able to detach from something that was actually attached in my body, I'm able to detach from anything. Just like me, each one of you are carrying your own flashback. Free yourself, stop carrying with a lot of weight. So if you want to free yourself and stop living a life that you don't like, and also if you want to change your, your life and not suffering a panic attack like me, please do the next three things. First, become aware of your attachment. Second, understand why you are so attached to that. And the last, but the most important thing is to get rid of every single rock that doesn't bring joy to your life and detach from it. Thank you, Maria. Now we have one minute for judges. Paula, are you ready? Yes, I am. Paula Lomeli, the heart language. The heart language, Paula Lomeli. Today, I want you to open your eyes. Now, I encourage you to open your mind. Oh, did you feel uncomfortable or lost while looking at my hand? Yeah, that's exactly how I felt when I met Pili and I learned how to open my heart to a brand new language. Toastmasters, fellow listeners and guests, Pili, a Spanish grown woman who is deaf. Believe it or not, she told me how to speak. How ironic is that a deaf person teaches someone how to speak, isn't it? No, no, don't get me wrong. I didn't mean sign language. I mean our inner voices, our values, the hard language. At this point, you might think to yourself, what does this hard language stand for? Actually, everything is better with me trying to speak cetacean, a story from Finding Nemo used to communicate herself with a whale. In my defense, this happened before learning how to use the different inner voices. Hello, Billy, I am Paula. It's really nice to meet you. I noticed by her gestures that Tilly was a little bit offended with my ignorance on how to socialize with a deaf person. Clearly, 
somehow telling you that she had a purpose in my life. She start teaching me how to speak in a regular speed. No too fast and away to the red lips. No too slow to be offended or bored. Keeping eye contact, but most importantly, using my voice of patience. Patience was her when she was teaching me how to cook paella. Now, beforehand, I have to inform you that common sense is not that common for me. Plus, cooking is not my thing. I still don't know how that actually happened. I just remember looking at the fire, going up to the ceiling. Billy! 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 The apartment is on fire! While she was washing the dishes, so calmly, and then she turned on the stove. She told me, there's no need to jail or shake her to catch her attention when I could have turned on and off the light. And here I am, learning how to use my voice of Gary. Oh, certainly when that up eating outside in case you wonder. When it comes to hang out, she usually gets nervous because most of the time people make fun of her tone of voice or feel desperate as she usually asks the same question too many times when she doesn't understand something. In those situations, I stood up for her by using my voice of justice. Hey, she deserves to be listened. Show some respect. To me, living with Pili was not only about learning how to use the different inner voices in my heart language. In fact, I found how lucky we are to be able to be here since we speak more than one language. At the end, it doesn't matter who you are, as long as you can use your voice, your hands, or your whole body to communicate with others, just do it. But make sure that your heart language it's full of good values, despite religion, culture, ability or disability, even preferences. Your inner voices speak more about yourself and who you are. I truly believe that this could possibly be a step to lead to a more inclusive society. Remember, Next time that you have the chance to talk to anyone, put all your communication barriers aside and at least try to use the voice of patience, caring, and justice. Toastmaster. Thank you, Paula. And now we have one minute for judges. Carlos, are you ready? Yes, I am. Rodrigo Arvide, a free word, free to be me. A free word, free to be me, Rodrigo Arvide. Whenever something hurts, observe. 
maybe just like trying to teach stuff. Anita Crisset, chairman of the contest, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. A few years ago, I started to read and study about Buddhism. And you can practice Buddhism in three different ways, as a religion, as a philosophy, or even as psychology to understand the mind, its nature and its functions. I was really determined to understand this mystery. And the reason why is that I am amazed of how small changes in the way you approach to things around you, to anything, can lead to very different results. For example, there are some therapists that are able to help patients in just a few sessions, while other therapists with different techniques can take years and years to help other patients with similar conditions to recover. Another example is, Imagine two different boys or girls, men or, or women, with same knowledge and really similar backgrounds. Both can have completely different levels of success or achievement in life, depending on how well they can control their inner thought, their inner talk and emotions. Full disclosure, I am not a therapist. I am not a great psychologist either. But you know what? I am a regular user of the mind. I use it every day, just like you guys or anyone listening to this speech. So it really doesn't matter that I am an engineer and my business has to do with sales and finances. In order to be successful, I must learn how to operate this amazing tool God gave us all, our beautiful mind. And so should you. You know, there are so many things that we can't control in life. We can't control the weather. We can't control the place we were born at. And we can't control our spouse or other people's actions. That's ridiculous, right? Buddhism taught me that one of the main causes of suffering is the unreachable expectation that everyone around us should behave and act as we expect. We just can't do it. And whenever I have this illusion that, for instance, an orange tree should give me peaches, I will suffer. And let me tell you right now, it's not the orange tree's fault. It is my full responsibility because I fail to acknowledge the true nature of that tree. It's an orange tree. It, it's not a, a peach tree. Here's a few things that we can control though. And those things can lead us to happiness. We can control our mouth. The words that we speak are continuously shaping our reality. The way we describe the things, people, and relationships around us is constantly building our lives. Number two, we can control what does it mean? The meaning, that's right. And we're living in a year where this is more evident than ever. Every one of us had challenges when COVID-19 hit the world. And there are people who took that hit as an opportunity to become better and better and to change and adapt. And other people, they are still hoping and waiting for things to get back to normal. <laughs> they will be waiting for a long time until they decide to adapt. The third thing that we can, can control is our actions. Global pandemic, boom, that was a major hit. That was hard for everyone. But what did we do about it? Did the Toastmasters organization quit or stop? Or did we adapt for this new reality? Aren't we here in this Zoom meeting? <laughs> Are you struggling with because somebody left you or because you lost your job during the pandemic? Good. Decide what are you going to do about it? Are you earning income through social media or are you just scrolling and wasting time every day? Are you complaining because the world is changing too fast? 
Why don't you try to be excited instead? Shape your reality with wisely chosen words. Decide what's the meaning of everything that's happening around for you. And finally, decide what are you going to do about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the only way to be free in life is to be aware of all those little things that keep us grinding us down to the ground. Break them apart and walk on chains. My invitation for you tonight is that you become aware of those little things. Just by being aware, change is going to start immediately. What are those things that keep you chained to your credit card debt? What are those things that hurt you from other people's actions? What are those things that are preventing you to unleash your full potential? Focus on what you can control. Focus on the thoughts that will set you free. You deserve to wake up every morning and shout out loud, I am free to be me. Toastmasters. Thank you, Rodrigo. Please, one minute for judges. Corina, are you ready? Yes, ready. Corina Moreno, well done, human. Well done, human. Corina Moreno. Let's play a game. It's called Imagine. I'm going to give you a sentence about a person, and you just need to picture the answer in your head. Ready? Let's go. Number one. Imagine someone playing the drums. Possibly a man? Yeah. Second, imagine someone cooking dinner for a family. Is it a woman? I knew that. Next, imagine a chief executive officer, a CEO. A man, is it? Finally, imagine someone taking care of a little baby. A mother, am I right? Now imagine a world where gender has no stereotypes. Fellow humans, today I'm not here to lecture. I'm here to make you reflect on a two word life changing concept gender bias. Let me explain you with a story. There was a long time ago a happy family a mother, a father, and a little girl. They had a pretty home and had an amazing routine. The woman was in charge of going to the supermarket, getting the house cleaned, cooking and basically having everything perfect for her family. While the men had the responsibilities of going to work from Monday to Friday, eight to six, paying bills, having money, and spend the nights at home. Years passed, the routine maintained, but suddenly discussion started and the parents decided to get divorced. Their little kid, didn't understand it. And it took several years for her to really understand what was behind that decision that broke her heart. 
that girl is me. When I was a kid, I used to think that my mom was meant to be a trophy housewife, cleaning and doing everything. And my father was the man of the house, the provider. But in reality, both had different dreams. My mom wanted to get a job, become a CEO, have her own money, and not stay all day long at home. And my dad wanted to open his own business, be his own boss, so that he could have time to be with me at home. Now, can you guess who was the real villain in this story? Yes, stereotypes. A woman working? A man staying home? What? That's where gender bias start. But how? In fact, our unconscious brain learns from whatever surrounds us and establishes neuronal connections between different concepts. For example, blue is for boys, pink is for girls, boys like cars, girls like dolls, boys get dirty and girls get clean. And you may think, well, yeah, but now as adults, we think different. Really? In the professional environment, what about the connection between a man and a CEO? A secretary, a woman. A doctor is a man and a nurse is a woman. A chef is a man. But who is expected to cook at home? A woman. So I'm amazed that despite we're in 2022, we still have to talk about this. Gender bias is not a woman issue but a human issue that started when we were kids and now into adulthood. Men and women, we both hold gender stereotypes and it's up to us to change that. Instead of seeing our differences, what if we start to see our similarities as human? And if you now understand this concept, then you can act upon Changing your society, changing us, implies going to the core of who we are, of our values. Gender makes no difference when talking about being a better man or a better woman or having a better world. So please use this message as a leader in your company, in your community, in your school, as a Toastmaster. You can speak up and make yourself heard. How can you start to change? Easy. The next time you catch yourself surprised of seeing a man or a woman doing anything different from their stereotypes, don't think, what? Think, wow, finally, well done, human. Thank you, Corina. Let's have one minute for judges. And now we will allow enough time for the judges to finalize their counting and send their balloons. Chief judge, please let us know once you have all the balloons to continue. And now I'm going to switch a little bit to Spanish. Por favor, es momento de que todos los participantes manden 
sus votos a través del código QR que tienen impreso. Es el momento de enviar sus votos y muchas gracias por participar en esta actividad. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots uh, this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bien, nuestra actividad especial ha terminado. Gracias por haber enviado sus votos. Gracias por su participación. And now we will continue with the interviews. It's very important to know a little bit about our contestants. So it is time to do it. So I'm asking all our contestants to turn your cameras on, please. Thank you. Well, I'm going to start with the same order of participation and I'm going to ask you the same question. It's going to be the same question for all of you. So please start with Andrea. Andrea, if you could solve one word problem, what would it be and how might you solve it? Okay, I think one of the biggest problems I've seen in my profession as a psychologist is all the stigma we have towards mental health and how this issue makes other people not ask for help or even end up in the streets because their family throws them out of the house. So I would solve that problem. And I'm like, I already actually started doing something about it. I have a podcast and a social media, um, Instagram in social media, where we talk about mental health and we tell people that if they need help, if they're having depression, anxiety, or any other problem with mental health, we will help them. So. I will start with that. And if I had more things to do, I would definitely build an organization that helps others and lets them see that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that it's not just a great world and that Thanks. they are not alone. Thank you very much. Mental health is very, very important. Let's go with Guillermo. Guillermo. Do you want me to repeat the question or do you have it? I got it. And I can tell you the, the big problem that I will solve if I could will be world um, hunger. I think people have the right to eat food on a daily basis. And we have the obligation to make that food available for the people if we can. So if I have the resources, if I have the contacts, the connections, and everything that I need to solve that problem, that's where, where, where I will start because not being able to get something to eat, that's really complicated. And I think that's where the majority of the problems start. You can see on the streets, people that is not able to eat uh, and that creates problem because of hungry. So that is one of the most internal desires that people have to eat 
and that is basically what most people do on a regular basis but a lot of people can do it and that is because they don't have access to, to that basic rights and that's where we're, where i will start and especially telling people well if you have food for today just uh, appreciate that because that's what you what makes you have this life and enjoy it so probably you see it as something normal but i think uh, eating is one of the uh, is a privilege for for the majority of uh, and well there's there is people that can eat on a daily basis so that's where i will start carolina thank you very much guillermo we all have the right to eat on a daily basis let's go with mariel yes um i think that one of the main problems i would love to solve would be education um i think that well I, i've done many volunteering jobs uh in different countries and i've realized that education is pretty important since we are uh, chi children so one thing we can improve is free access um for everyone like internet and also you know, teachers or people that can guide people from all kind of um uh, sociales i don't know how to say that <laughs> but uh, i think it will be cool to to help the new generations with education um because for example in in korea north korea they don't know what is happening in other countries or maybe in cuba or i don't know you name it so yeah thank you very much education so let's go with paula paula go ahead thank you carolina in my case i truly believe that one of the biggest challenges that we are facing around the world or the majority on the countries is the lack of tolerance the lack of empathy and not and i would like to focus this on matters of people with disabilities and neurodivergence neurodivergence is a concept that covers different conditions such as autistic obsessive compulsive disorder and many more in that case i, I to be candid with each one of you i think that we have a lack of tolerance and empathy with being inclusive in that matter. In my case, as being part of an IT company, I had the chance to lead a business resource group for those communities. And I had the chance to work in a boot camp to teach people with disabilities, external from other company, to learn about our, our technology, prepare them, and then provide jobs to them. Also had the chance to work with an IT team, an IT squad, to work in a software for deaf people. And also from my end, I worked in, with an external company to help to hire some autistic people in our company as well. So that's what I work in my end in order to help others and being inclusive. Thank you very much. Empathy is also very, very important. Let's go with Rodrigo. Thank you, Carolina. I think I would democratize education. Um, I really think that one of the main things that can lead you to happiness is helping other people in any area of your life, of their lives. And um, I believe that education so many times goes against that uh, principle of nature by teaching us how to compete and earn more and do more, but without um, asking ourselves, what are we contributing to our society and, and our family and, and, and all that. And on the other hand, also um, one kid um, won't be able to try to achieve anything if he or she doesn't know it exists. And education right now is driven by I don't know who or I don't know what government, but haven't you wondered why are, are they teaching our kids what they teach? I, I wonder who made that decision. So I would start by democratizing education. Let everyone be involved actively in what are we teaching to our kids. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. 
very, very important issue, democratizing education. So let's go with Corina. Sure, Carolina, thank you. I think if I had to sum it up in one word, would be stereotypes. And actually, it takes into consideration many of the things that you have already said. Because as we are children, we are taught that women must be silent or must take orders, and men can't cry, and that deaf people are not good enough to take a job. And that's not true. We are new generations, we are changing the world. And in fact, I think that the most important lesson for nowadays is to say that despite we're different, that we have a majority of ethnicity, races, and genders, we still are one. And we still together make the world a better place and also like some efforts to get to a, an, a major objective that is that our generation and our world get new things and new information and new mindsets that can change over and over throughout the years. So if we stop these stereotypes, that we Hi. can change the world. Thank you, Corina. Stereotypes. We have to work a lot, a lot for this. Thank you very much for your responses. Now we are going to show you your recognition for being here, for reaching this level of the contest. So please, Master, can you help us, please? Andrea Castellanos, thank you for your participation in the International Speech Contest in District 34. Guillermo Gonzalez, thank you for your participation for this, the International Speech Contest in District 34. Mariel Ramirez, thank you for your participation. Thank you for being a finalist. Paula Lomeli, thank you very much for your participation and reaching this level. Rodrigo Arvide, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you for being here. And Corina Moreno, thank you very much for being finalists in this international speech contest. Thank you very much, you all participants, and I wish you all the best. You are already winners. And we also want to thank you, all the people who help us to make this contest possible. There is a lot of work in order to make this contest. So, please, Master. Thank you for our Master Bernardo Flores for helping us to make this contest possible. Thank you very much, Bernardo. Carlos Romero, our timer. Carlos, thank you very much for being here and for helping us to make this contest possible. Jair Guzman, our second timer. Thank you, Jair, for helping, for giving your time and being here. Indira Sanchez, she was our speaker in the evaluation contest. Indira, thank you very much for your effort in being here. And Giovanna Jimenez. Giovanna, thank you for being here, for helping us in being in, the, in this contest, uh, being Sergeant at Arms. Now I'm going to ask, uh, we are going to make the evaluation of the contest. We are going to project the one uh, QR, QR. So please help us to make the evaluation and we have one minute for it.
Well, I'm going to give the word to our head judge, Antonio Alvarez. Please let us know if there were time disqualifications or origin originality protests. Please let us know, Antonio Alvarez. Thank you, Toastmaster. Yes, we don't have any problem with the originality and also with the time and with, with, with any, any kind of problem. And we have the results now. Thank you very much for letting us know. So the contest is over. Thank you very much for being here, for your participation. And I'm going to give this floor to our program quality director in order to receive the results of the contest. Arturo Aubry.
ofrecer a los tres ganadores de los tres primeros lugares a nivel distrito del International Stage Contest y a mí me corresponde entregar el tercer lugar. Y en este caso, por favor, redorra la voz. En esta ocasión, el tercer lugar de la final del International Stage Contest 2022 en el distrito 34 es para... Muchísimas gracias. Ahora para el segundo lugar del International Speech Contest. ¿Quién será el segundo lugar? ¿Quién será? ¿Quién será? ¿Está presente? ¿Qué se me ve si está presente? Creo que sí está presente. Corina Moreno. Y ahora vamos a conocer al ganador o ganadora del International Speech Contest del Distrito 34 y quien nos estará representando, por supuesto, en el mismo International Speech Contest a nivel, por su nombre lo dice, internacional. Así es que el primer lugar del International Speech Contest del Distrito 34 es... Para...